So hello guys and uh, in this video, in this video tutorial series, I will show you guys how I made my interaction system and I will also teach you how to make it. So basically it's a quite flexible interaction system and you can do a lot of stuff with it. So for example, you can open the doors like this. You have this toggle that you can use it with holding or you can use it immediately. And I expand on it, like you can pick up some stuff. For example, here's the key. Imagine that this is the key and this is the lock. You can see that I have the text saying you need a key. So I have to pick it up first. So once I use it, it will disappear. It will go to my inventory and now I can open it. And you can expand on it further. For example, here I have the interactable that will start the dialogue. So if I click, the dialogue will pop up. Pop up and you can answer the questions and uh, the dialogues are very stupid don't don't read them they are just test and also i have the examine interactable so you can actually interact with it and examine it like in walking simulator games or any horror games or uh, any kind of games and if you click e for example if, imagine that this is the note if you click e uh, imagine that you can read the note here so it's very flexible system but i'll show you guys the basic and you can expand on it or if you want me to make more advanced stuff just let me know in the comments and i'll make them so let's get started so i'll uh, first i want to talk about the scripts so we will have the interface that's called i interactable and this er interface will be derived uh, like every class that is interactable will derive from this interface has to implement this i interactable interface and here we have some few properties that will be shared common like they are common across all the interactables so every interactable will have those property will have those uh, variables like hold duration and whether you want to hold to interact with stuff or just click E to use it. And the flag, whether you want to use it multiple times, like the light in the room. And the bool, whether you want to like check if this interactable is actually interactable or, or not. And also it will have a method that is called oninteract. And this will be called once we interact with stuff. So for example, you can have the class that is called destroy myself. And once it will has to implement this on interact and inside it, uh, you just destroy the cube and you can do a lot of other behaviors like open the doors and everything will be called by this on the inter through this inter on interact uh, interface. So that is the most important thing. And I will explain more during the, the process of making. So now let's actually start making it. So I'll be using the first person controller that I made and you can download it uh, in the link below or just watch my video and you can down download it. I already implemented the I interactable uh, like interaction system there. But if you want to follow this tutorial, just delete all the uh, script that I say that you have to delete. Okay, guys, so once you downloaded the like the project that uh, is on the GitHub, you will be left with this like current scene. So basically I have this like uh, test scene I can walk on and different stuff. And here I have two interactable stuff. So I can show you very quickly. So if you like approach, for example, this cube and you click E, it will be destroyed. And this one, for example, you can pick up like in uh, in portal, but it doesn't work very nice. So if you want to follow this tutorial, we'll have to delete uh, those cubes. So delete those cubes and I will also delete the basically we'll delete the uh, interactable f folder. And also if you have this interactive interaction system folder and script, uh, you also delete it. So let's delete it. Like, uh, okay. And if you go to scriptable objects, we have interaction data and interaction input data. 
So let's delete them also. And now uh, we can actually start. So let's click Ctrl S to save it. And I, I have few red warnings, red nulls. And okay, in input handler, you have this, this thing, so we can delete it. And just delete everything that is red. So let's see where else we have it in pickable data. So we can also delete this pickable data uh, input, those two in scriptable objects. So let's delete them. And now there should be no problem, at least I think. Okay, there's one more problem. We just have to delete the pickable input data and those two in update from update. So now it should be okay. So let's start. Now it should be nice and clean. So let's start from the first script that is the easiest one. So actually from the, the one that we just deleted. So we can create a new script and I will create it in scriptable object folder. You will have it like, or if you are using your own project, just like create the same script as me. So I'll create a C sharp script called interaction input data. And this script will be res responsible for getting or just storing the information about the input that we uh, used, that we clicked. So if you watch my previous tutorials, I always uh, store them in scriptable objects because it's um, a lot more handy for me to store it in scriptable object rather than hard coding it like if input that get mouse button or get key down. I, I prefer it this way. So first it's a scriptable object. So we don't derive from mono behavior. We derive from scriptable object. We will not need update and start so we can delete them and I will make this script a bit bigger and maybe maybe I will change the view to Zen mode. Oh my gosh. Sorry guys. <laughs> maybe not. So yeah, so we will have this uh, scriptable object and now we have to write the attribute above it so we can create it in the unity. So you just have to write the attribute called create asset menu. And first we have to pass it the file name. So you write the file name string and here you give it the name. So I'll call it interaction input data. And as the second parameter, you pass the menu name. So I'll pass the menu name called interaction system and I will give it a slash called input data. So if we save now and we go back to the unity, you can see that if I right click and I have this create thing and you go up, you can see that you have this interaction system that we just created and you have sub folder like sub uh, thing called input data like in the script. So if you click here, it will cre create a new instance of scriptable object uh, with the same name that we call it in the script. So it will be called interaction input data. So after you create it, uh, I will drag it into the good uh, folder. I have this separate folder called data and here I just create my uh, just delete this interaction input data and interaction data. I forgot about them and pickable data and pickable input data. So just delete them and I will just drag this new interaction input data inside our data folder. And if you don't have it, you can create it. It's just my personal stuff. Like I prefer to store it in the folder called data. So here we have this asset and now let's go back to the Visual Studio and let's actually code it, like finish coding it. So basically what we will need is some few booleans. So we will need the boolean once we clicked our 
our interaction input uh, once we click our interaction input and once we release it so let's have two bulls so I will write private private bool called interact clicked so I'll call it m underscore interact clicked and I add m at the beginning because it's my naming conventions like it's uh, it's a good practice because uh, C sharp said it like Microsoft said it <laughs> and I just prefer to have m underscore before interact because I know that this is the private variable and for public I don't use m underscore just a quick note so we have this private bool called interact clicked and we will also create a private bool called interact released so i'll call it the same and i will write re rewrite release so now we have those two bulls but they are private so we want to access them from the other script so we have to either mark it as public but we don't want that because we don't want to expose our variables private variables so for that reason we will make properties and it's also a good practice to use properties instead of public variables uh, because it's a better better way to encapsulate your code so we will make <clears throat> a public bool with the same name as the variable but with the capital letter so it will be called interact clicked And now we have to make a getter and setter. So if you are using the new Unity, like 2019, you can write the getter like this. So you write get, you use this lambda expression, which looks like an arrow, and you pass the variable that you want to get once you call this property. And it will work totally fine. But if you have red line, like uh, below this sentence, it means that, uh, you don't have new new unity or you have the old version of c-sharp then you have two ways uh, you can either go back to unity and go to file not go to edit go to project settings and if you click on the player if i'm correctly yeah if you click to the player you should have this in config under configuration you just you should have the scripting runtime version and I use the net for x equivalent because net 3.5 equivalent will be deprecated and will be not used. And once you change it, uh, it will require you to reset the project to reopen the project. And once you open it, I think it should work, but I'm not sure. So if it's still not working, then I think you have the old unity. So if you, if it's still not working, you just have to write this old method which is get you write the open brackets those curly brackets and you return the value that you want to get so it will be m interacted clicked but i will use the new version so because it, it looks a lot nicer like this and we will also want to set it so we we want to set this boolean from the outside script so you have to write the same so you can use the lambda expression and now you just write the variable that you want to set but you have to assign it to the value and the value is the value that comes once you call the script so if you as assign it from the other script the value is the variable that you assigned so now after we made it we just have to copy it and we do the same with for the interact release so Let's call it interact release. And we want to get the interact release and we want to set interact release. So that is it guys. I think we are almost done with the script. We have to make one more method. Uh, that is not quite necessary, but I like to add it. So let's make a public method, public void called reset so in this reset method we just want to reset our uh, variables to the default state so just write m underscore interact click to be false so we will call it each time we start the game so we will reset it to false again and 
the reason why we reset it because a uh, scriptable object will like re remember the state of the variable once you finish the game so that's why we we want to reset it at the beginning of the game so that is how the script looked i will zoom it out so you can copy it if you want like here and yeah guys so now after you've done it we can go to the other script so i have the script that is called input handler and if you don't have it uh, just create it and here i have like few other i have the same same pattern so you have the input data for different actions and we will just add the interaction input data here so it will be the same process so here i use the box group which is the attribute that comes with naughty attributes assets uh, pack so you can download in the in the asset store and i made a video about it so it basically helps me to segregate the inspector so it will be under the input data if you don't have it just don't worry about what i'm writing right now but i will show you what i mean guys so we want to make it private actually it, it can be okay let's let, make it public because we want to drag it through inspector so it will be public interaction input data and we will call it interaction input data and the reason this should not be visible and the reason why this should not be vis visible because uh, i made a namespace called uh, vhs and this one is not in this namespace so we have to add the namespace vhs to it so it will be visible for the other script i will just move this curly brackets down sorry it's my phone guys it's reddit and now it should be fine so let's go to input data input handler and now if we have this interaction input data at the beginning we just want to reset it so interaction input data and as i said we'll call reset and as you see i made the method called reset input not reset so we can rename it so if you click f2 it's you can rename it to reset input so now i will it's it is reset it at the beginning and here you can see the pattern that I make. We have separate method that will be called an update and it will get the actu actual input, like actual state of our input inside this variable. So we can create a separate method called get interaction input data. And here we'll actually create the body of it. So it will be a void. I will call it interaction input data like this uh, get interaction input data so i'll copy it and paste and here we want to access the interaction input data that we will drag in so we have this variable that we created at the beginning called interaction input data and if i now click dot you can see that we have few properties like two properties that we created we have interacted clicked and interacted release and we want to first start with interacted clicked and we want to assign the some key to it. So for example, I don't know, the E key is the most typical. So you write input the get key down because it's once we click it. And the key code for E, you just write key code dot E. So now it will save the state of whether we click E to this variable. And we do the same with the interact release. So I'll copy the line below and I'll rename it to interact release and it will not be get key down it will be get key up so now we have the input data so if we go back to the game and now let me let me drag the game here so you can see it and for the purpose of showing I will make I will go back to the interaction input uh, data for, for a second I will make those two variables public so you can see them in the inspector 
Okay, so you can see interacted clicked here and interact released. They are now set to false, but uh, during the game they will be set it to like to true and false. So first I have to assign this asset that we created to this input handler class and I have it on uh where I where do I have it? <laughs> okay, I have it in the man manager's group. Under manager's group, there's a game object called input handler and there's a script called input handler. And now I just have to assign the asset that we created. So it will be interaction input data and you just move it here. So now it has a reference to this data. And if I click play, not on the maximize. And if I click E, you can see that. Okay, something is not working. Okay, maybe it's. Okay, guys, so actually. I made two debug that lock in the input handler called e clicked and e released and I will add the interaction input data that interact clicked and this will return either false or true and in the interact release I will just add interaction released so if I go back to the unity now I should see it in the console and the reason why this is not visible is because I think it's too fast and uh, Unity can't see it actually. But if I click E, if I go to the console you can see that we have E clicked false and if I click E once you can see that it turns to true and E that release is also true. So it works but it's not visible here because it's too fast or actually or Unity just doesn't update it that fast. So it's working guys. So just trust me. So we can delete those two debug.log lines and we can reset them to the private variables because we don't want them to be public. So that will be it for the first video guys. And I will see you guys in the next one. Uh, it's quite long, but yeah. So thanks you for watching and see you guys in the next video where we will actually start making interaction system. So thank you and goodbye.